Hello, friends. It's story time. Legitimate story time right here. Uh, I entered a, a short story writing competition back in, I don't know, May. I haven't gotten the results yet, but I was tasked with writing uh, a thousand words max. And I was given a, a genre, a setting, and an item that I had to, you know, work into the story. Uh, my genre was suspense. My setting was a sleeping car on a train. And my item was a thimble. So I'm not going to drag out the intro. We're just going to dive in. This is story time. This is called Make Space. The dry dead grass was the perfect canvas for the sun to paint in shadow. Unfettered by cloud cover, each one was crisp. The shadow train, an exact replica rumbling along the same rails. The train's glide was not subtle. I gently shook in a way that reminded me of Grandma, before it got bad, before the fits, before the seizures. Grandma only exists in dreams, shadows, and memories. Today is one year to the day. I still scroll photos. I still sew. When buying a ticket for a sleeper car, the term car was often subbed with compartment. This was the latter a closet storing a set of bunk beds. The wood-paneled room still smells faintly of cigarettes from when that was a thing. The light doesn't work. I turn a thimble between my fingers, occasionally stopping to wear it on my pinky. It only fits my pinky. Grandma has small hands. You're a different kind of Cinderella. I sing to no one. Cinderella, how does your garden grow? Cinderella, why does it feel so wrong to know that you're a different kind of Cinderella? I sang to no one. Staring out the window is mesmerizing. The scrolling landscape is still save for the shadow of the train. From engine to caboose, there's uniformity in the cars and the spaces between them. All of them but one. Mine. The shadow followed as shadows do, though mostly they stay the same shape as what cast them. Even if they're feathered or warped a bit, even if they're distorted, the shadow of my train car has a rocking chair on top of it. Is there a rocking chair on top of my sleeping car? I have no way to prove there isn't, or is, but it's crisp and clear and opaque, and there, after a few blinks, it's gone. Sleep can be elusive, but if you wait long enough, you'll track her down. Sometimes she shows you things. Sometimes she shows you things you don't want to see. So do shadows. There's a black mist in the shape of my grandma trying to teach me how to sew. There's a sad twist at the end of this dream, but at least I know. So my lucidity can shield me from the blow, and then when grandma does go, I won't feel so alone. The dissipating mist was always the denouement. I can't pinpoint when she changed from corporeal to mist. Who really knows why anything happens in dreams, or shadows, or memories? Grandma owned a thousand thimbles and different needles that went with each one. The ever-replete rainbow of threads displayed on shelving in a room that smelled like old people and cigarettes. In the days when she was dexterous enough to swing a hammer, Grandma put pinholes in this particular thimble. When a light shone through, it would reveal the Orion constellation. When I was young, I called it Making Space. A five-year-old me would repeat, Make space, Grandma, make space, until she would dim the lights and transport the stars inside. A dead field drying out in August, heat drifted by out the window, then some trees... Another dead field, another dead field. The train's incorrect shadow keeps pace. The thimble slips from my fingers as I turn it. It falls to the weathered carpet, bounces once, and is gone. Under the bench seat, the pen light illuminates years of grime, but no thimble. Where is it? I spent the next minutes frantic. Where is it? I lift at the bench, but it barely moves. Finally, my searchlight in the gunge is refracted back at me like an ember of hope. 
No one cared to know why Grandma created and kept these talismans, charms, trinkets, or whether they had anything to do with her darkness at the end, or why the shadows were different now. Afternoon turned to evening without my notice. The shadows weren't outside anymore, but that didn't make them any less menacing. Now, I just don't know where they are. The dead fields turned into rural towns and graduated to suburban hubs out the window. The overhead lights flashed rhythmically as we kept a steady pace. The makeshift strobe gave clues to the whereabouts of fanged gargoyle silhouettes but no definitive answers. Between the darkness I saw them bleed into each other and then creep into my compartment. A gnarled mess unfolds, the shadow of dream grandma, a mockery of memories, a black blanket in humanoid form moving closer, closer. I place the thimble over the lens of the penlight. Orion the hunter is blinked into existence. His presence pierced the incoming shadow in sixteen places, one for each pinprick, one for each star, obliterating the darkness and pushing the black mist back long enough for me to paw frantically at my compartment door without looking. Finally, it opens, and light from the car hall floods in. Instantly, the shadows are gone. After throwing myself out into the hallway, I test the first steps back into the room like bath water. I sit down on the bench bed and through the window... In the rhythmic strobe of light, I see the train shadow. Its accuracy is sharp, crisp, except for one detail. The lone discrepancy was Grandma's rocking chair perched atop the sleeping car of a train, headed towards the next wave of shadows. So yeah, that was my entry. I hope you like it. Let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, like the video please subscribe to my channel maybe I'll tell more stories I don't know I have another round of the competition coming so I'll make sure to post that one too um, yeah, I think that's it thanks for your ears friends and uh, we'll see you next time cheers